Hey guys, this is Daniel Bloodworth, and uh, you know I was I was reading the press release uh, for Next Car Game uh, about a, a week or two ago, and uh, one of the things that that kind of grabbed me and caught my eye was that they said that they had taken this game around to several publishers, and they were essentially told that nobody wants a game like that. Nobody wants a game like you know they were making, you know where you beat up cars and demolish cars, and and it just like it blows my mind to think that. Wait, we're we're not we're not getting this kind of game because publishers have decided that people only want licensed cars and not destruction or, or or what? I mean, this you know this is the kind of game that I I've been kind of waiting a long time for since Burnout has kind of gone away and and Criterion have just been doing Need for Speed stuff, um, and it's just it's something that we've been kind of hearing like over and over again in, in ways. You know, one of the reasons that Devil Fine went to do Broken Age on Kickstarter and that whole thing blew up was because, you know, they had that similar kind of reaction, you know, oh, don't, you know, nobody's going to fund uh, an adventure game uh, because nobody's going to buy it. And uh, Banner Saga, I don't know if, it's, if, it's, if they went through exactly the same kind of thing, but they obviously, those guys, you know, kind of left Bioware to do their own thing uh, because they wanted to have full creative control to make the kind of game that, that they had a vision for and not have it you know, influenced by all these marketing people and, and people telling them what people want uh, rather than them actually designing uh, what they had uh, an, an artistic vision for. And I think that all three of these games kind of prove that whoever's in charge of making these decisions and making those reactions and greenlighting games is basically wrong. Uh, Next Car Game did over a million dollars in one week on pre-sales and early access on Steam. Banner Saga did seven times their their goal that they had originally budgeted. Uh, Broken Age did, you know, obviously that was, you know, that was the poster child for Kickstarter. They did th like three million dollars. And you look at, uh, you know, a next car game still too early to say. Uh, although the technology demo and the demo that they have out for pre-orders is really fun, uh, but Broken Age and Banner Saga have for sure proven themselves to be excellent games. Uh, you know, with without a huge amount of uh, you know, people working on them or, or extra resources. And I think that publishers need to take a step back and look at this trend and say, you know what, there's better ways to do this. There's better ways to assess uh, what kind of games we can make. There's better ways to foster creative people and, and identify their visionaries in their group and allow them to kind of rise up and, and work on a smaller project. You know, you don't have to you know, go out there and go hog wild on some crazy AAA thing with make you know with 700 people behind it or something. But you know, let people develop a vision and, and see where they can go with it. Uh, you know, let people uh, kind of you know trust them more to to make something rather than just reacting to whatever's popular. Uh, and, I, and I think if you don't do that, you're just going to lose these people. These people, are, you know, are finding more and more ways uh, to be viable, uh, making independent studios and self-publishing. And if you're a creative person, you're, you're only going to be able to stick into, you know, that rut of doing the same franchise over and over again for so long before you just branch out and you, you do your own thing and you find a way to be creative. Even if that means that you're not popular, or you're making you know games for the app store or something like that. You're you're going to eventually get out there as long as you can keep yourself fed. Um, and I think I think some people are on the right track. Uh, I think Sony has been uh, really at the forefront of this for a long time, uh, funding indie games and things uh, like Journey and uh, Unfinished Swan, and just really giving those smaller teams a stability to create uh, at their optimum level. And, uh, and also even within, uh, you know, on the, the Japanese side with Tokyo Jungle, I mean, you know, that game's not perfect. The game has flaws, but I'm glad I got to play that game. That was a crazy little game that, you know, who knows, you know, why they went ahead and, and greenlit that. But man, I'm glad they did. Uh, another good example I, I think of is, is stuff like Child of Light. And, and that's just like a really smart way of, of letting their developers you know have some creative freedom and and you see that in it's just such a fresh take uh on on that genre and uh, on art styles and and all of that and i just think that th there needs to be more courage in those respects and and if you look at child of light too you know it's like you know it's 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 a 15 dollar game you know it's 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 not 
you know, out there expecting people to, to buy into a $60 experience. It's finding that right place for the market. Um, so I, I hope that more publishers follow that lead. I hope that Ubisoft continues in that vein and uh, that we can have uh, more creative games coming out uh, from the bigger companies.